How are our leaders going to define this century? What is going to be the vision that we begin to let unfold that will define what this century is going to be known as in the future? Is this going to be a renewal of a great, wonderful country that is a light on the hill, a great country that sheds uh, its uh, great innovation, invention, and uh, technological advances and all into, the, into this entire nation? Or into this entire world, and into this entire world? Or are we going to just kind of wait back and see what happens. We know China is saying that this is their century, that the 21st century is going to be China's century. Are we going to just accept that? And or are we going to try to come up with a vision that's a lot greater than what China has? And other countries have, not just China, but Iran, of course, they have their vision. Uh, we could name any number of, of countries that have a vision for the 21st century. But what is going to be our vision? Are we going to just allow uh, the visions of other countries to take the place of our uh, wonderful vision that we've traditionally had of being a lighthouse, a mighty tower that demonstrated uh, civilization and uh, technology and advancement and education and all to be the education country are we are we starting to fall behind and are we uh, uh, threatening are we are we kind of letting ourselves fall under the under the idea that maybe we might be coming under a uh, poor future as far as education comes is we're going to begin to lack be lacking in the education field compared to other countries or are we going to allow ourselves to become less competitive in industry and in technology than other countries how are we going to face all these things we have leaders now that if they have the vision of this they're apparently keeping it to themselves you don't hear it in any of their speeches. The things that they discuss have nothing to do with the real vision that we really need to have in order to keep this a great country. And so, I just want to present a vision that is clear and that is out there and that people have something that they can realize actually can come true if we all work together. Now what should our vision be of the 21st century? Well, it, it should be a century of racial harmony. We've been working on it long enough. Ho hopefully, sometime in the near future, we will begin to de correctly define what it's going to take to bring about a, a racial harmony and bring about a real not just in word only, but real equality to every member and every citizen of our country. That's going to be a major vision that needs to be expressed and needs to be expressed clearly. Not just ran over real quickly, but expressed clearly and a clear vision of how all the ingredients in that and all the ways it has to, all the things that have to take place in order for that to begin to take shape. And then we have uh, to begin to work on our education system in a serious way because our educational institutions are falling behind. They're moving forward in areas such as socialism and things like that, but they're falling behind in teaching real the real heritage of the country and in teaching how we're really going to be competitive and how we're going to have a vision for our country that is greater and greater all the time. A real vision of how America is going to be ahead of all 
expectations in the future and how our our country is going to be a leader in the world. This should be something that is, that is taught in the education system. That, that, that America is going to continue to be a leader in the world, going to continue to be the uh, the uh, leader of the free world and how we're going to go about doing that. <clears throat> we're not going to be the leader of the free world or any other world if we just let our education systems fall behind and we uh, don't invent new things and don't innovate new things and don't create new things and uh, tax our industries to death, tax all of our corporations to death, uh, put so much regulation on uh, our companies and all that they have to go over. They have to move to another country in order to just be able to be competitive. If we don't consider uh, what is going on with the investments in all the countries and how they have to, how people in the country have to have the trust and the faith to invest in our and the growth of our country. If we don't look at the growth of our country in a way that will allow it to continue to flourish instead just look at how much we can tax then that's going to be you know where we can find more tax money that we can throw at social programs well that that is going to be something that is going to cause us uh, this century to be defined as the century when the united states fell behind other countries and is no longer really the real leader and so that's a deep concern, a deep concern. And the deep concern is not that we cannot remain or that things have taken place in the world or will take place. It'll cause us not to be able to remain the leader in the free world and not to remain free and not to re increase our ability to maintain democracy, but rather that we're going to put in leaders that are just not going to have the vision as to what to do, they're, they're, they're going to be too close to just Washington, D.C. and uh, the various things that the interest group bring up, the various low-level visions that they uh, hear about in their own circles, the circles of, politic, of politics, and not really see a vision of a greater country that we're not going to be able to find leaders willing to run for public office because there's so much corruption and because we're not encouraging the right kind of people due to a lot of the terrible things that are going on and, and a lot of the infighting and a lot of the backstabbing and all these kinds of things that are, that are going on uh, discourages real leaders from moving into the positions of, in government that we would need in order to maintain that vision that we must have in order to maintain this as a free nation and define this century as a century when America became the real and true leader of the world in every area of competitiveness and industry and technology. We should be the leader in technology. We have more freedom here. More freedom for people to develop their creative abilities. We have more freedom here for people to be everything they can be. We have less burden upon them here in order for them to get a good education and uh, start a business and innovate and invent and create. We have more freedom for people to do that. So how do we need to be great leaders and have great vision? We've got to make way for even more of that. We've got to make sure that every citizen of this country has that freedom. And that freedom continues and it doesn't, we don't come down to a place where there's so much infighting between political leaders that that cannot take place or so much fighting between the races that, that we lose sight on what we're really here for and what, what, that, that we're here for every citizen and we're not here uh, just to uh, lift up one particular race or or downplay another race or any of these types of things is this. Fairness in all things. Getting our education systems and in universities to gain a vision of what is actually needs to be taught and how they can actually become 
freer for all citizens. Programs that will update any anyone that is behind due to maybe be living in a as a, as a, a being raised in a community that was way behind in the area of uh, proper school systems, rundown school system or systems that were just unable to to stay up to standard for one reason or another. Equipping our universities to deal with this rather than just saying, just denying admission or, or uh, failing the students once they get there or any of these other techniques are, you know, getting a large group. So many of them will get a large group of students in the freshman year and then half of them drop out before the freshman year is over because they weren't prepared to deal with the course load. And not understanding how to take part in laboratories and all that will make up those deficiencies. Understanding what those deficiencies are. Making them up and so that they can go ahead and proceed. We need to put more in the, more innovation and more thinking and more thought and more vision into how to make up all of the deficiencies that are in our students due to the different environments in which they were raised in. And we shouldn't have a situation also where only the students that, gra that graduate from private high schools and private schools are able to be competitive and not the ones in public school. And the ones in public school won't be as competitive. But that all students will be able to go to a great institution of higher learning and be able to compete. So, so many of these things we need to look at if we're going to define this. One of the things I want to see more than, you know, especially my own particular vision that I always lift up is that I want this to be called the century of education. The century of having an education system like has never existed before. An education system that will make the country a, a, an example before the world of how to educate, how to make students competitive, how to have the highest majority in the world of students that are able to graduate from college, that are able to compete in college, and that are able to gain degrees that actually make a difference in the world. They can make a difference in the world in so many areas. The, uh, that if these areas are if their deficiencies are made up, then they will all be able to compete in these various and in uh, various areas of education that is the most needed and the most competitive and will make them shine to the fullest of their capability. Students will have the background in science and mathematics and the background in competency in English language and writing and competency in, competency in all the liberal arts and all the understanding of our heritage and history to the point that they can go to a good university and truly compete and truly prepare themselves for a bright future in every way. We need to define this as the century when students were able to gain the education to make themselves, each and every one, no matter what background they come from, are able to graduate to a degree which will lift up their lifestyle, raise their financial ability, raise up all their resources. So I'm going to pray right now. Father, in the name of our Holy Son, Jesus, paint the vision in our universities. Give the university presidents and the university trustees and the university leaders and the boards of the vision of having a, a century of greater educational ability and great educational competency. And now if there is anyone ill, I just pray if anyone has an incurable disease of any kind, and there is none, that you will pray, that I will pray now, that we're going to pray that they will be lifted up from all their sicknesses, curable and incurable, and all of their diseases of every kind, and be healed and raised up to a, a place where they will achieve and have happiness and joy and peace and prosperity in every way possible. 
and that they, anybody needs to be delivered from obsession, oppression, or depression. Father, in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, deliver them up from all their obsession, depression, and obsession. We pray all these things in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen.